joining us. How did it come about that Malaysia invested in you in, uh, in Series D funding? Uh, we've always been open to very large, uh, very large institutional investors, which would, we have a long-term vision. We've never chased short-term money. Uh, and we were, of course, available in the market, and we were looking for those investors. And uh, the markets at the top of the pyramid were really quite narrow, so we found them really cultural fit. And at the same time, they really care about social good and education and all those factors which Blipper is looking to diversify into. So it was a good fit. Yeah. What are you going to do with the money? So the proceed of funds uh, is going to be threefold. Uh, we will invest uh, in a lot more machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence. So uh, in a huge increase uh, in, uh, in staff base uh, out of the Bay Area and San Francisco and Mountain View. Uh, we will continue to uh, expand, uh, really go deeper in the markets we are in. So we're quite, quite global. We've got like 14 offices worldwide. So instead of like expanding further, let's go really uh, deep on those markets. And lastly, uh, infrastructure cost uh, of a company which is consumer facing is pretty high. Uh, and, and deep learning infrastructure isn't cheap. So uh, we need to invest a lot there. Funny. Yeah, and I was just wondering about how difficult it is to raise money in this environment. Uh, did you find it harder to raise your Series D than the previous series? Uh, for us, I think uh, it's also an aspect of timing and we were we were we had actually a lot of incoming prospects in the business we were pretty much not like out there and, and meeting everyone so we did meet only limited so as i mentioned before we the kind of size we are raising and the kind of investors we target there are quite a few of them at, at the top of the pyramid uh, but generally it's just not me and uh, many of my uh, founder friends it is getting increasingly harder to to raise money what do you think of tech valuations it's a big uh, debate, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, there's a price correction uh, in the market, and uh, it's a very personal philosophy, but I've always been a big believer that a business should be valued not alone in its user base, but also revenue potential. Yeah. Uh, and we as a business have throughout been a very balanced company where we've been uh, using, uh, in increasing our user growth, but actually making revenues. What is your revenue projection then? I mean, how, how big can you, can you become? I mean, I, we, we, we certainly can cross multiples of billions of dollars in revenue. The, the opportunity with this space is so big. Uh, and, and, and do not consider this as an exaggeration at all, because what we are trying to do, we are trying to index the physical world. Uh, indexing the physical world gives you the opportunity to monetize the physical world. And who are your business partners? Who's embracing Blipper the most within the business community? So uh, literally the top 20 spenders in the world, from Procter & Gamble's to the Unilever's to Coca-Cola to Pepsi, to the large agency ecosystems like WPP and the Interpublic Group. So it is the core people who anyway work with the Facebooks and the Googles of the world. Is sourcing talent going to be more difficult if, if, if Britain leaves the European Union? Have you thought of that? Uh, it would certainly affect like larger companies than where we are. For us, sourcing talent is anyway difficult because there aren't many people in the field of AI. It's a very emerging trend. Yeah. Uh, and, and we still, but we, with the current funding round and our increased reputation, we are becoming a more of a talent manager. What's your valuation? I can't reveal that. <laughs> <laughs> Had to throw that in. Good to see you. Blipper.com Chief Executive Amberish Mitra there. Good luck to you, sir.